So today I'm doing an evaluation of my EcoTemp on-demand hot water heater and I've had this thing since uh, shortly after I went on the road in 2015. Um, <laughs> funny story, I was kind of, well, for several, I would say several weeks, maybe a couple of months, I was roughing it um, with the with the the bus after I first left. So, you know, I kind of I kind of looked at it as an adventure and a, you know, kind of camping inside a vehicle. So what I did, the plan was um, to get one of those um, bag um, showers. Basically, it's a, I think it was a Coleman. Um, it's clear on one side, black on the other. Basically, a vinyl bag with, with one of these, uh, one of these hanging out uh, the bottom end of it. So it had a valve on it, and the 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 purpose was to heat up your <laughs> heat up your shower water by leaving it in the sun. So it was a solar shower thing, but it almost never worked, um, mainly because um, the, I mean, if it's in the dead of summer like it is today, uh, you know, it's the third, the third of July and it's plenty warm enough to take a shower in the coldest of water. So, um, and that was the downfall of that um, portable solar shower it just <laughs> like it's hot as hell in here now and uh, I could take a shower without heating the water at all although it's always much nicer you can turn this water heater down to you know I, I'm guessing maybe like 80 90 degrees um, just where it's lukewarm just takes the edge off the water so uh, but anyway back to the back to the solar water heater it uh, it lasted a few weeks and it started getting cold the the, the temperature started changing and I was in Colorado um, to be fair and I just got to the point where I would sit the I would set that bag of water out after a long hard day of riding or hiking or whatever I was doing I would set that water out for an hour or two or sometimes more and by the time the sun started getting ready to go down I wanted to take a shower before the water cooled off but it was too late I, the, the water never really heated up because you know cold air blowing on this bag of lukewarm water chilled it chilled it to the point where it just didn't make any sense um, as you can see, I just uh, finished taking a, a warmish shower. Not exactly warm. I didn't really have time before the sun went down to, to heat up my water. But uh... Anyway, uh, so shortly after I bought the, uh, the, solar, the solar water heater <laughs> shower, and you know, it was... It was okay. I mean, it was okay as long as the, you know, it would take the chill off the water. That's about all it really did. I, I'm guessing in the summer it would work really good, but why do you need a hot shower in the summer? doesn't really make any sense. So after a few weeks of roughing it uh, with my solar shower heater, my intent was always to get one of these anyway. Um, but I just kind of wanted to put it off because I really wanted to have an adventure instead of working on the bus Which is why I split before I even finished the bus because uh, I, I wanted to, to roll I wanted to to live rather than make a fancy RV out of a school bus. So Anyway, uh, shortly after I decided I'd had enough I stopped Into an RV place and that's the one good thing about these eco temps you can find them at any almost any RV place. Every place I've looked, they've had them and they're relatively cheap. I think I paid 160 bucks for this and that's pretty much the standard. So um, if 160 bucks is in your budget and you can get a propane tank or you already have a propane tank, this thing is kind of brainless. Um, 
the first the first one I mounted pretty much the same way and this is this is what I do to control the temperature and the flow the, there's basically two controls on this thing um, you've got a water flow rate which affects the temperature of your water but mostly your gas regulator is going to control the temperature um, depending on how much line you have in the it's not an instant change but it's a whole lot better than uh than a standard water heater and uh because you can't <laughs> if if your water heater well no i guess i guess a standard water heater let's talk about the differences the the standard water heater um, is basically a tank full of water it's an insulated tank full of water it's got a bunch of coils in it and then um the the gas or electric heats the water and keeps it in a tank so in theory it's always ready um, so basically you're boiling water all day long to be able to take a shower once a day or get some hot water out of your sink for washing dishes i don't know but for me it's since i've been in the rv it just absolutely did not make sense i never thought for a second i would buy um, one of those tank systems and i'd heard good and bad about the on-demand systems but i think the good and bad comes from mostly um, the whole house systems where the 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 systems that you get in a whole house system are ungodly expensive i think i've seen eight ten fifteen thousand dollar price tags on them 160 bucks um and i know the the tanks that you put in rvs are a third the size of what you'd find in a house but still they're they're this big you know they're as big around as you know a, a garbage can and you know maybe half the size of a garbage can i would say by the looks they're six eight ten gallon um tanks but you're carrying all that water around you're heating it all the time unless you're plugged up it just doesn't make any sense to me it just i can't imagine that i'm burning propane to keep a tank full of water hot um and i don't shower every day um sometimes i'll go for a couple of days without showering so um just that fact alone just doesn't make any sense but uh boiling water um 24 7 I mean you're not always bo uh, boiling it but it's you know when it gets cold the propane kicks on and it heats it back up to your specific temperature whatever you set it to so that in itself is a reason not to to get a tank system and um, if you live like I like to live which is out there in the middle of nowhere you're off the grid you you don't have you can't hook up to the propane tank when you pull into the campground or whatever and i'm not really sure there's a lot, a lot of that out there anyway so um i mean i'm sure they've got electric heaters but same same situation if you go somewhere where you're not plugged in you don't have hot water that's really really bad all i've got to do is if i run out of propane i pop the pop the regulator off the empty tank onto the the full tank and i'm good and my my tanks last me a good long time i would say six months plus so but let me um show you the cockamamie <laughs> operation of this thing uh I, I did a tour not too long ago and i showed that this thing is not exactly installed even correctly but much less the probably the way it's going to wind up being i just haven't figured out how to mount it um that will that i will be pleased with but it's probably going to be some i'm probably going to build a box or something right here um that i can mount this to but this these valves are not mixing valves as you can see i've only got one side connected but as i alluded to earlier um I control the temperature of the water with the gas regulator so um, so if it's too hot I turn it down um, and if it's too hot I turn it down and <laughs> 
if it's too hot I turn it down here and um, I don't I don't use the cold mixer at all so it's real simple I think this would and this is the way I did it in the last bus too because this would get real complex you're you're fiddling with this and you're fiddling with this and these two you know it's mixing your water just perfectly this always comes out as hot water it comes out as hot water here, it comes out as hot water in the sink around the corner, and it's always the same temperature unless I fill with this dial, dial right there, and it's usually, almost always it's perfect. Um, the colder it gets, the more heat you need in the water, but other than that, this is, this is perfect, and I'll, I'll give you a brief demonstration right here. And uh, So basically, when you turn the water on, there's a flow sensor in here that recognizes there's a flow sensor in the unit that recognizes that you you're requesting hot water and as soon as it does that you'll see you'll hear the igniter coming on and it's starting to shoot propane up here and you'll see flames through these these little glass windows here and I'll show you that right now so basically I turn the water on and it has to be enough flow but you can see that we're we're heating water right now so um, and it takes just a second but I've got hot water now so you might want to not hit yourself with the, the water as soon as it comes out but um, and as soon as you turn the water off the tank goes off um, the propane goes off so there's no there's no real danger and I've actually stood up at the vent up here while this thing is going and there's a little bit of hot air over here i don't think you want to put your hands up here you don't want to hold on to this thing but other than that it's uh shockingly it's not really uh, much of a safety issue either i've got steel up above here and i've got tile behind here so that's not an issue either but i would say they do come with a uh a deflector shield i took mine off so i could get it closer to the to the ceiling and get it more out of my way and this kind of looks like a pain in the butt um, it decreases your shower especially if you make your shower really small like I did I don't spend a lot of time uh, in the shower so you know 10-15 minutes a day I just didn't want a lot of space in here um, I probably spend more time pooping every day than I do <laughs> to take a shower so um, but uh, not sure what else to, to say about this thing. It's I've taken hundreds of showers in here and it's been flawless. I've never had a single problem with it. Um, still running on the same batteries I put in here. It takes I think two D cell batteries to run the igniter. Um, uses very little propane. Um, I can't imagine doing it any other way in an RV, in a schoolie, uh, whatever. I can't imagine doing it any other way. It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, my biggest issue at this point, if I had to, if I had to switch to a standard tank, either electric or propane, if I had to switch to a tank, I wouldn't know where to put it. I mean, it's huge. Where am I going to put that thing? Under the sink? I guess I could put it under the sink. Um, but you know I'm real stingy with my space because there's not a lot of space in here even though I've tried to maximize it as much as I could there's still I'm kind of stingy with my space so um, with all that said it's a real easy install probably the hardest thing I did to install this thing was drill holes in my tile to get some bolts to hang on and and that's what you've got you've got some just just like hanging a, almost like hanging a picture frame except it's easier and you just hang this bad boy up um, I've actually uh, got mine bolted in here really tight because you know it, it doesn't it doesn't go anywhere um, got a little bit of flexibility but it's not gonna come off the wall um, the other one never did and I didn't even have I didn't have it bolted in as tight as this one so um, and I really love it I've got uh, 160 dollars there I got I don't know 20 30 dollars in my in my um, cheap Home Depot valve, another 10, 15 in this. So I've got under $200. I'm showering in absolute luxury. And 
Um, I think the only limitation is how much water do you have in your tank. And other than that, you can get this thing about it. You can get it scalding hot if you want to. Turn it all the way up here. Or you can take what I like to have is just, you know, warmish, just above lukewarm uh, showers. 160 bucks. You can have one of these too. I highly recommend them. I can't see doing it any other way. And I don't know why you would think of doing it any other way either. Uh, even a moron can install one of these with PEX. So, and that's what I've done. PEX, uh, got to get these fittings on really nice and tight or they will leak. Mine's, mine's got an air leak in it. So my pump comes on every once in a while and lets me know, hey, I got an air leak, but I haven't seen any fluid. It's not, it's not big enough leak to be a fluid leak. So it just pushes air through. Uh, and I'll probably fix that sooner or later. But that's it. Eco Temp available online, available at most RV stores. So if you're driving down the road like I was in 2015 and you get pissed off because your water's cold and you're tired of taking cold showers, stop by an RV shop and pick you one up. Um, I am a 100% believer in on-demand uh, water heaters and the people that don't like them probably have never had them. I think it's a lot like composting toilets. The people that don't like composting toilets have never used a composting toilet. If you have used a composting toilet, you will never go back. You will never go, you will never install a black tank into your rig if you use a composting toilet, especially if you've had to deal with black water. Um, same with this. I, I can't imagine somebody using one of these and going, man, this sucks. I need a big tank that I need. I need to boil my water 24 seven and I need to carry a big sloshing thing of water around under my sink so I can, I, it just doesn't make any sense. doesn't make any sense at all. So that's my evaluation of on-demand water heaters and the Ecotemp. Love it. Mm -hmm.